Hi folks, uh, welcome to a short stream of Dennis Day of the Sons. Uh, I'm Niall, I'm game director in the project, uh, and I've been working with Rocket Flyer for well over five years now. Uh, my background is in programming and development, so I'm bringing sort of technical mindset to the game design and to some of the discussions today. Um, I'm excited to talk some more about Dennis Day of the Sons. It's been a little while since our last update, um, and with me today I've got Michael. Hi everybody, um, I'm Michael, I'm a game designer as well on Dynasty Stands. I have a kind of creative uh, design modeling background in uh, 3D and uh, design background and I want to talk to you about some of the cool features that we have in Dynasty Stands. But first I want to quickly mention that our Steam page is up so please head over to wishlist the game. Uh, the Discord is now live so search for Dynasty the Stands Discord and um, if we can we'll leave a description down at the bottom of the video. And finally, we'll be releasing early access in 2024. So keep an eye out for all of the cool and um, little little bits of information we're going to leave between now and then about Dynasty. It is so at its heart, Dynasty is really a survival city builder. Um, we want players to feel challenged in surviving the harsh conditions of ancient ancient life um, and everything that comes with that. So dealing with disease, uh, dealing with uh, the weather, uh, and a variety of other things too. But at the same time, we really want and wanted Dynasty to be a creative experience. Um, to achieve that, you're going to have to progress through these survival periods. Uh, but as the game moves into the sort of mid and late game, uh, there's going to be more and more things like uh, being able to build uh, bridges, gardens, decorative objects, a really wide variety to sort of make this city your own. And with that in mind, we want to put the player in the shoes of being the pharaoh um, and creating your own story in this in this world. So that that's some of the idea behind the game. Uh, there's a lot more to it than that, but yeah, it's a good jumping off point. Yeah, definitely. Um, kind of to really nail down the expansive uh, world that we're trying to build um, in the very ancient Egyptian era, um, so we wanted to make sure that the map itself was very captivating. It felt full. Um, you know, even though we're building in a desert, we want to have different uh, aesthetics across the map. So you'll have like very rocky terrain with like um, tight corridors that will be difficult to build large structures in and large barren open dunes. We also have um, close up to the Nile, which is going to be a lot more friendly for growing plants and a lot more uh, like hospitable to their to your villagers' lives. Um, we've made a big push recently in trying to get the aesthetics of the game um, up to up, up to our standards. Um, a lot of that comes down to making new um, nicer models for uh, early game buildings, um, new textures and assets we've put in. We're also working on environment effects, so to have like desert storms kind of blow over your map. Um, a lot of animals uh, existing and walking around the terrain just really make it feel a lot more uh, vibrant. Um, I think it's a big one that as well, some of these features are connected into the um, uh, actual gameplay. So as you're going through the game, the soil and terrain types are going to have a big impact on what you can grow. And I'll let Niall talk a little bit more about that as well. Yeah, um, I think it's a really interesting part of the game. It's one of the sort of parts of the game design we've taken in a slightly different direction than, than a lot of games do. Um, so. This map that we've created, it has obviously got the textures of the different uh, soils and types of ground all over it, the sand and the rock, the muds uh, and grass, um, and we wanted to bring these into the gameplay. So uh, when you're placing things like uh, mud pits or farm plots, your fertility of the ground is based on the actual textures, the actual ground that is available there. Um, and I think this feeds into the game being quite physically based. We want players to feel like they have to expand outwards and move across the desert um, and that that's not such an easy thing to do. And this really feeds into that of there's only so much fertile land available, especially in your starting zones. Um, so yeah, you're, you're going to move outward in search of more resources and, and better lands. Uh, probably in addition to that, it's worth mentioning that we're also putting in some tools to allow you to uh, somewhat terraform uh, your lands, so that's particularly irrigation uh, with wells and canals, and those will actually grow grass around them and improve the fertility of the land around them uh, for your farm plots and to be able to grow better crops and get better yields. Uh, but yeah, I think that kind of covers the basics of that, that system. So yeah, I just want to highlight some of the features that we're working on with the God system. So 
uh, we rewanted each um, of the six possible gods that pop, uh, that can appear in your game. Um, when you start the game, you'll get uh, three randomly uh, assigned to you. There's also scenario editor, so you can kind of pick and choose what gods you want to work with. Um, but as you start up the game, you'll get three of these uh, random, uh, randomly chosen gods, and each are going to have slightly different wants and needs. So um, that might come down to if they want funerary and um, specific funerary rites or uh, amount of worshippers or even sacrifices. And we just wanted to have a slightly different flavor for each of these um, deities. So it felt like that um, you can kind of like play towards your given play style with, with each of them. Um, a really nice feature that I think the gods can offer the player are boons and curses. So while you're playing, each of these gods are going to offer certain uh, levels of demands. And if you don't meet those demands, they're going to bestow curses that can come in like um, various different like happiness debuffs or um, you might lose some resources and, and, and things along those lines. Uh, the boons are kind of the opposite of that. They'll give you happiness boosts, they'll make your villagers more productive. And um, that's, that's why we wanted to kind of have the gods as a as a bit of a an entryway into giving the players a bit more freedom of choice when it comes to playing uh, uh comes to playing um how do the gods uh, work in terms of that so we're working on a worship system and the uh worship is kind of if you think about like a faith, uh, faith that the villagers can build up over time so by placing shrines and effigies and other um uh, religious icons around the map you're able to increase your villagers worship and that worship then can be used to feed into um, these powerful deities to kind of try to take as much of the um, positive benefits that they'll give you. Um, that's a really quick overview of the god system. Um, obviously, there's more to come on that. So uh, keep in, uh, yeah, kind of keep keep up to date with us, and we'll we'll get more descriptions in the, as time goes on. Cool. Yeah, no, that all sounds really good. Um, yeah, I think the next thing that I want to talk about potentially is uh, the death and disease systems within the game. Uh, we've already touched a little bit on the on these systems in our uh, sort of latest dev blog, but I think it's something that's uh, interesting to go over here. Um, so in Dynasty, death is something that we really wanted to make a big part of the game. Um, we uh, when villagers die, they they fall to the ground, but they don't just disappear. Their bodies have to be uh, taken to burial sites. So uh, the player has to place these burial sites sort of strategically. Uh, they take up space, obviously, and uh, the player has to choose where they place them uh, to avoid them being too close to villagers' homes and things like that. Um, dead bodies are then taken to these burial sites. If they're not buried, uh, dead bodies can lead to disease and sort of hit the happiness of your population and nearby. Um, so yeah, that kind of covers death in the early game, you're building these very simple burial sites, uh, but uh, in the later game, uh, once you start to build a noble class, death becomes a slightly more complicated issue as nobles, uh, the noble class expects to be buried in tombs, so that's more resource intensive for the player, uh, it's more difficult for the player to achieve. Um, so in this way, death sort of scales throughout the game. Um, and another interesting feature that kind of goes alongside death is disease. Disease is not the only way villagers can die by any means, but it is something that will crop up throughout your experience, um, and it's something the player has to manage. Um, so diseases are broken into a few different categories. Uh, there aren't too many diseases in the game, it's not something you have to keep track of a wide variety, but there are a few particular ones, and each of them has their own effects and their own causes as well. So, for example, drinking from unclean water sources um, can lead to your villagers getting sick, uh, this disease is transmissible, um, and it will literally pass from villager to villager based on their location, so sort of high-density population areas are more uh, negatively affected than lower-density areas, uh, which I think is something that's quite interesting for the player to have to manage. And to combat these diseases, there are a number of different healers' buildings, uh, from an apothecary to a sort of infection ward. Um, these buildings negate the effects of certain particular diseases, uh, which means the players to kind of strategically place uh, these buildings depending on where certain diseases may crop up. Um, so it's something that'll scale throughout the entire game and it won't be something you'll be dealing with immediately and uh, it will be extremely difficult. But uh, yeah, it's something that adds quite a, a bit of a different flavor to the game. Uh, I think that mostly covers uh, our topic on uh, disease there. Um, and from here, I think we're probably just going to move into the, the end of the stream. Um, 
So I think I'd just like to remind everyone that Dynasty is now, uh, it's there on Steam and you can head over there to wishlist it. Um, in addition to that, we've launched the Discord very recently, so please head over there and get involved in the conversation. It's a great place for us to get direct feedback um, and, yeah, really have a conversation about the game. Um, and other than that, that's everything from us, so thanks very much for watching, and, yeah, we'll be back again soon. See thanks, you. guys.